Hello everyone, welcome back. We're talking about the development of the ear and in this section we'll deal with internal ear. So this section has been divided into, into an overview in which we'll see what are the components of the internal ear and what are the sources of development of these components. Then we'll talk about the components of the otic vesicle. Then we'll see what saccule, cochlear duct and organ of corti are. A lot of new things in this section so let's get into it and see what these things actually are. So <coughs> the figure represents the internal ear. Uh, this is an expanded view of the internal ear. The purple shows the bony labyrinth, the blue shows the membranous labyrinth. At this point in time, I'll not go into the details of the bony and the membranous labyrinth. We'll take them one by one so that it gets <coughs> easier for you. So internal ear is the first of the three parts of the ear to develop. So important to note that internal ear develops first. It is produced, it is developed as a localized swelling on either side of myelin cephalon of the ectoderm. That is the otic placode. So this local thickening on either side of myelin cephalon of the ectoderm, this is known as the otic placode. The otic vesicle is primordium of the membranous labyrinth. So uh, the otic vesicle forms the membranous labyrinth. So let's see what an otic placode, an otic vesicle actually is. So first of all, otic placode soon invaginates the mesoderm to form the otic pit. So this is the otic placode. This otic placode is formed in the region, uh, in the ectoderms that surrounds the myelin cephalon. This otic placode now under the invaginates the surrounding mesoderm. This is the mesodermal area. And this otic placode is now invaginating into the mesoderm to form the otic pit. Now, the fusion of the margins of otic pit, this is an otic pit is being formed. Now, this, uh, this otic pit undergoes fusion of its margin to form the otic vesicle. Now, these are the otic vesicles. So, these are bilateral structures because there are two ears in the human body. So, these are uh, bilateral structures being formed simultaneously on both the sides. Now the otic vesicles, they get separated from the surface. Now they're separated from the surface. Now growth of the otic vesicles and formation of a uh, part of the membranous labyrinth now takes place. So uh, we divide the otic, otic vesicle into a ventral saccular portion and a dorsal utricular portion. So uh, we divide the otic vesicle into a saccule and a utricle. Now the saccule lies <coughs> ventrally and the dors uh, and utricle lies uh, dorsally. Now uh, as the saccule is further divided into uh, the ventral saccular portion is further divided into a saccule, a cochlear duct and a spiral ganglion of the vestibular cochlear nerve. Now uh, the uh, dorsal utricular portion is divided into a utricle, a semicircular canal, a semicircular ducts, the endolymphatic ducts and sac, and the vestibular ganglion or the vestibular cochlear nerve. So <coughs> you'll see these structures on the figures, and then you'll uh, it would be easier to understand at this point in time. Just try to remember the differentiation or and the or the. Uh, parts that contribute to the ventral saccular portion and the dorsal utricular portion. The entirety <coughs> of it forms the membranous labyrinth. So this is all what we were talking about earlier. This is the otic vesicle. The otic vesicle forms the endolymphatic sac. This, uh, the upper blue portion is the utricular portion which is the vestibular part. The lower yellow portion is the saccular portion. So this is the utricle. These are the semicircular ducts. Now this is the cochlea. Now the semicircular ducts are being formed. The utricle is expanding. Now this is the saccule. <coughs> so now you can see this is the ductus uh, reunions, the utricle, the ampullae, the semicircular canals, the endolymphatic sac and duct. This is the saccule and the Ut uh, utricosacular duct. So this is how the development actually takes place. Now let's take a look at saccule, the cochlear duct and the organ of corti. So during the sixth week, the saccule forms a tubic uh, tu 
tubular diverticulum so we are talking about the saccule this this region so during the six week it forms a tubular diverticulum this is the tubular diverticulum its connection with the saccule becomes narrow forming the ductus reunion so this is the uh, ductus reunions which is formed by a narrow connection between this diverticulum and the um, saccule now the mesenchyme around it condenses to form the membranous labyrinth so the mesenchyme which surrounds this area it is responsible for the production of membranous labyrinth this condensation is converted into cartilage to form the otic capsule and this is how the otic capsule is actually formed that is the mesenchyme that surrounds this tuberculum initially forms the membranous labyrinth and then there's condensation uh, this condensation is finally converted to cartilage to form the otic capsule now the cartilage of the otic capsule is converted into bone to form the bony labyrinth so from membrane from initially from mesenchymal condensation to uh, cartilage formation and from cartilage to the formation of bony labyrinth this is how the steps proceed in the formation of the saccule the cochlear duct and the organ of corti so this tubercle uh, this tubular diverticulum <coughs> the cochlear duct that grows in a spiral fashion till it's complete till it completes two and a half uh, turns so this uh, this cochlear duct this undergoes uh, this undergoes circular this spiral uh, this uh, grows in a spiral fashion till it completes two and a half turns and is responsible for the production of uh, the adult structures now this perilymph uh, which is the fluid in the epi uh, in the perilymphatic space uh, between the bony labyrinth and the membranous labyrinth so between the bony labyrinth and the membranous labyrinth there is a space which is known as the perilymphatic space the perilymphatic space is filled up by the perilymph so membranous labyrinth has fluid which is known as endolymph now the special sense organs for hearing and equilibrium develop in the wall of the membranous labyrinth so the um, the special sense organs which are responsible for hearing as well as e equilibrium both of the function of ear <coughs> the special organs required for assessing these functions they develop in the wall of membranous labyrinth they are innervated by the vestibular cochlear nerve attached to the brain stem at the junction of pons and medulla so these special sense organs they are innervated by the vestibular cochlear nerve and vestibular cochlear nerve actually lies um, attached to the brain stem at the junction of pons and medulla this figure again shows how the development of the uh, of this otic vesicle proceeds to the development of the adult inner ear so from otic vesicle to the endolymphatic sac we have a utricular and a saccular portion this is the cochlear duct that undergoes two and a half division this uh, at the same time there is formation of uh, mesenchymal condensation to form the membranous and then the bony labyrinth uh, the form the cartilaginous and then the bony labyrinth <laughs> this converts into the membranous labyrinth in itself and the fluid is secreted and the special sense organs for hearing and equilibrium are developed in the wall of the membranous labyrinth so moving on the mesenchyme of the bony labyrinth now we can divide the mesenchyme of the bony labyrinth into scala vestibuli which lies above the duct and scala tympani which lies below the duct so we talking about this this is the cochlear duct so this uh, is the otic capsule this is the modiolus and this is the cochlear duct so this is the modiolus again and this is the uh, cochlear duct the basilar membrane the vestibular membrane this is a scala vestibuli and this is a scala tympani so let's take a look at uh, what these structures are so the mesenchyme of the bony labyrinth so this in purple is the mesenchyme of the bony labyrinth uh, it is divided into scala vestibuli this structure this is the scala vestibuli above the duct which lies above the cochlear duct and the scala tympani which lies below the cochlear duct it is separated from the cochlear duct by vestibular membrane <laughs> the scala vestibuli is separated from the cochlear duct with the help of this 
Vestibular membrane and the scalar tympani is separated from the cochlear duct with the help of a basilar membrane. Now, the lateral end of the cochlear duct is attached to the surrounding cartilage by a spiral ligament. This spiral ligament, the <coughs> medial end is connected to a long cartilaginous process which is known as the modulus. So we're talking about the cochlear duct <coughs> now this is the cochlear duct the lateral end is attached to the surrounding cartilage by a spiral ligament all right now the medial end is connected to a long cartilaginous process which is known as the modulus this is the modulus in light blue and to the modulus is attached the medial end here you can see this is the medial end of the cochlear duct which is, which is attached to the modulus now two ridges develop on the basilar membrane the inner and the outer ridge so due to this connection with the modulus there are two ridges on the basilar membrane basilar membrane was the membrane that was separating the scalar tympani from the cochlear duct these ridges are known as the inner and the outer ridges so this was all about this section in this section we talked about the development of the inner ear in the development of inner ear, we saw how the bony and the membranous labyrinths were formed. There were a lot of new terms, a lot of new structures. I hope you understood them. If not, try to go through the section one more time to gain a proper understanding for further such sections. Keep watching Scardia.com.